here to talk about color kind of on the capture and edit part of photography and this is one tool that I've absolutely be, uh, fallen in love with I cannot imagine shooting without it I carry my color checker passport with me everywhere and what I'm going to do is show you a little basics first I'm going to show you some stuff a little PowerPoint background and then we're going to go live first into Lightroom I'm going to show you how it works in there, and then we're going to go into Photoshop. So we're going to cover using it, uh, creating profiles, uh, both in Lightroom and in uh, Photoshop. Now, today's webinar is sponsored by X-Rite. They are the manufacturer of the Color Checker Passport, and on their website is a lot of great information. In fact, let me just show you a little... Uh, screen capture of that and the reason I show you this is because uh, right on the top you see learning and if you scroll down you'll see webinars and right there are all our upcoming webinars as well as a link which you see right down here it's not kinda hidden uh, but if you want to watch a recorded webinar you missed one or there, there's something else you want to review if you click on this link right here it will take you to our webinar archive page which has Oh, about a year's worth of webinars on all kinds of different subjects. So on x -Rite Photo, all the upcoming webinars as well as archives. Also, this one today is being recorded, so if you have to leave or if there's something you want to review, uh, you can always go there to do that. And after giving in to a lot of griping from some of previous webinar attendees, I had some people complaining that uh, my headshot hadn't changed. Um, in quite a while and you're right I had the same headshot up here for about a year so I've finally given in uh, and what, so uh, kind of what this shows is when I'm not teaching photography or taking photos or creating new programs one of my other passions is music both with the guitar and piano so that's the uh, kind of the explanation behind this shot so enough about me let's talk about color so again as I mentioned I'm going to give you a little background on the color checker passport um, first of all, well, let's kind of talk, what is it? Well, it's a set of tools, it's a set of targets combined with software that allow you to create profiles for your camera, allow you to custom white balance, and provides another target for you for sort of one-click adjustments if you want to instantly warm or cool uh, images. Now, you might think, well, I can do that in software. The beauty of this is it allows you to do it with it one click and you will always get to exactly the same spot without having to guess around. So I'll show you that live in the software. To make it a little clearer, let me just review the three targets and I'll show you what each of them does. Uh, I'll start with the Color Checker Classic target. You've probably seen this before. It's uh, been around for a while. You might have an older version of it called the Gray Tag Macbeth Color Checker. There's many ones. There's a couple different flavors out there, but they all kind of basically do the same thing. And if you take a closer look at the target, obviously we've got a gray scale on the one end, and you might not have noticed, but here we have RGB CMYK. And then these two rows are a selection of colors that mimic some colors that might, might exist in nature, flowers, plants, skin tones, etc. And the combination of these is what's going to allow us to create a profile. It might sound a little scary, but it's actually very simple, which we'll see in the software. And it's going to allow you to do a couple of amazing things, again, which we'll discuss live. Secondly, white balance, the white balance target. Now, you, I'm sure many of you have tools for doing white balance. There's all kinds of things out there. I've got a whole drawer full of them myself that I no longer use. The reason I like the Color Checker's white balance target is, well, one, it's always with me. It's in this little hard plastic case, and I can just flip it up and take a shot of it uh, if I'm seeing some changing light or if I want to have a reference uh, to do white balancing, uh, maybe because I'm in the, the, the rush. Now, I generally prefer to do a custom white balance. If I'm ever doing studio work, uh, if I'm doing landscape work, I will always do a custom white balance. However, I also have a portrait and wedding studio. When you're in the rush of doing a wedding, custom white balance just really doesn't make sense. So in that case, I will take a shot of this target as the light is changing. If I go from outside to inside, uh, from tungsten light to fluorescent light, whatever it happens to be, I'll include a shot with this target in so that I can white balance in uh, in the software. And this will work both for JPEG and RAW shooters. Hopefully you guys are shooting RAW because to really take advantage of what this system can do, you need to be shooting RAW, which we'll see shortly. 
And then the last target is called the Creative Enhancement Target. And this has got a couple of interesting features on it. Now, again, it's got a white to black ramp here. This is handy if you have the highlight warnings turn on your camera, which is sometimes called the blinkies. And if you take a shot with this target and you see one or two of these white patches flashing, that means you're dangerously close to being overexposed or you are overexposed. So it's a reference for that. This rainbow on the other side is called a, whoops, I went too far, sorry about that. Let me back up a slide here. Uh, this rainbow on the left-hand side is called a use saturation luminance row. It's mostly for reference, uh, so that you can see if some one color looks off, you, can, you know something's wrong. And then these middle two rows are the enhancement rows, and they're designed... Uh, for portrait and landscape left to right and you can see the little head there for portrait and the little mountain with the sun for landscape and how these work is they're basically flavored white balance patches and this top row this far this bottom one in this case is neutral as it comes across here you might notice they seem to get a little bit bluer if you white balance off of something that's slightly blue slightly cyan it's going to have the opposite effect it's actually going to warm the image Conversely, the row next to it is for landscapes. In this row, the middle patch right here is neutral. As you go over to this way, you can see again they're getting slightly blue. That would have the effect of warming a scene. As you come over here, you might notice they start to get very slightly pink. And that has the opposite effect. It cools the scene. So let's take a look at an example of how that would work. So here we have, again, the, the top row, in this case, the top row designed for portraits, the bottom for landscapes. Now, with a neutral white balance on each of those, you see what we have. If on the top row we were to white balance off, say, two patches in, you can see the overall tone of the image gets a little warmer, and it really has the biggest effect on skin. Nice thing about that is if you find that your white balance is a little too neutral and maybe your skin tones are looking a little pasty, this will allow you to get some warmth. And the nice thing about having that patch is you get to the exact same warmth every time. For the landscapes, a lot of times you want to enhance the greens and blues. So in this case, I white balanced one patch over towards the one that was actually slightly magenta, slightly magenta, slightly red. And that has the effect of uh, changing the blues and greens a little bit. And we'll see that more when we go into software. So let's go through the process. This is the process of the day uh, when you're going to use this. Again, when possible, custom white balance. It will give you a perfect white balance, not an approximate. Um, now, to do custom white balance, it's different in each camera. Uh, but this is one of those read the manual things, but it's very simple to do. Now, it's true that raw files do not have the white balance embedded in them, unlike a JPEG, which does have it embedded. However, if you do a white balance first, that data travels along with the image, so that when you load it into your software, be it Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever else you're using to process, it's already got the custom white balance data along with it, and the software will use that as a default. And so the nice thing about that is it will be perfect. Then after doing a custom white balance, or at least taking a shot of the neutral reference target, I will then shoot a picture of the color checker passport, showing both the color checker classic target and the enhancement target. And you can see you don't have to fill the frame. This image here was, was enough uh, to create the, uh, the profile from this. But you do, just, you do want to make sure that it's under the same lighting as your subject, and you want to make sure that it's evenly illuminated. You don't want to have any shadows uh, across it. So, enough with the uh, preamble. Now we're going to uh, go into Lightroom. And again, for those of you that joined us late, we're going to go into Lightroom first and run through the profiling process. And then we're going to go into Photoshop. So if you're just a Photoshop person, stay tuned. Although a lot of the things that we do here are going to apply in Photoshop as well. So let's go live into Lightroom. And I come right up to an image that's got our friend Sarah holding the target. Now, this one I've got a little bit bigger because it just uh, allows you to see what's going on. Now, let me go back down to the develop module for a second because I want to show you the standard. All right, so here's the target. Under camera calibration in the develop module, which is where the profiles live, you see Adobe standard, and that is what you start with. The profile is going to bring back a lot of color that this kind of safe standard seems to be losing, and it seems to be uh, particularly uh, heavy in uh, blues uh, and some of the other colors as well. You'll notice there's going to be a big change in these blues. 
Uh, sometimes in the pink, the greens get more intense, uh, and sometimes the skin tones change as well. But that's going to be different for every camera because cameras have their own bias. And I've noticed that my cameras uh, are doing that as well. So, and I'm going to show you that with a couple of different cameras in a second. The first thing we have to do is we gotta we got to create a profile. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? Watch how easy it is. As I mentioned, just simply take a picture of the target. Notice it's not perfectly square. It can be rotated. It really doesn't matter. The software will find it. And you simply, in Lightroom, go to File, Export with Preset, Color Checker Passport. And this shows up after you've installed the software. Give it a name. Now, this was shot with uh, Canon 5D. And this was, whoops, this was a, uh, a studio shoot that we're doing for an upcoming video webinar. Uh, based on shooting ambient light. So I'm going to call it uh, Ambient Studio. It doesn't really matter what you call it. You just want to call it something that you can reference. And I'm going to click Save. Now the reason I might want to do one, since this is studio and we're using window light, is if a lot of times the windows have a little bit of coating on it, and they might be filtering out a certain spectrum of light. So having a custom profile just for that lighting will correct for that. So you can see up on the top here, it says it's processing the profile, and it may take a few minutes. And as it's doing that, <clears throat> let me just check a couple questions here. So um, Brendan asks, can you use this to profile a scanner as well? Um, Technically, no, um, but having uh, you, there's nothing stopping you from scanning in the targets um, and trying to apply that. That's an interesting question. I haven't tried it that way. You can certainly use the white balance target for white balancing, but I haven't tried to do it with uh, the actual target on there. Okay, so we get a message here that the profile has been created and that Lightroom has to be restarted to activate the profile. Now, I'm not going to do that because I already had one done for you. So the first thing I could check is, well, what if my white balance was wrong? So I'm just going to type the W key to bring up my white balance picker. And if I hadn't white balanced, let's say my white balance was really off. Let's say in the camera, maybe instead of uh, having uh, set for daylight, maybe I had the wrong setting and I had it set for, I don't know, tungsten. So let me tell it, ooh, that's what my lighting was looking like. That's pretty bad. So I'll just hit W again. Me personally, I like to come over to the second gray patch because I know it's always got a little bit data on it, even if uh, my exposure was a little hot. And I white balance off of that. Now I know I have a good white balance. Okay. So now I've got my white balance, but I don't have a profile yet. So again, I'm in the develop module and I'm going to scroll down to camera calibration. So again, we're, we're given the Adobe standard. And what I did was I created one earlier for the 5D for this ambient studio lighting. Now what I want you to take a close look at, again, are the blues here and the green, the pink, purple. Watch what happens. Now if you, for any of you that already own a passport, you'd notice just holding it up in particular that this, this blue right here is a much deeper blue than what we're seeing here. In fact, I've got mine in front of me. Uh, this blue is darker, this blue is darker, this pink is a little more intense. Well, let's watch what happens when we apply the profile. Take a look at those colors. And you can see it's quite a jump. Let's go back again. Quite a jump. Now, what I was also noticing is, again, this is a Canon, this is a Canon 5D Mark II. I noticed that my 5D Mark II has a slight bias to it. It's got a little bit of a magenta cast to it because watch what happens to the skin tones as I apply the profile. You can see they get a little bit more yellow back in. So my camera does have a bias. What is a beautiful thing about the Passport is once you create a profile for your camera, what it's now doing is rather than just having a white balance, white balance is part of it, but white balance just sets a neutral. Every camera has its own interpretation of red, green, blue, and all these other colors. By having these reference targets, now the software knows, well, it knows the value of this red. It can compare it to what is the camera bringing back after it's been had the profile created. Now, since it has all these 24 patches to create a profile, it has a reference for red, green, and blue. What that means is if you create a profile for each of your cameras, and they don't even have to be the same brand model or same brand. It could be a Canon and an Icon or a Canon and Fuji or Olympus or a Sony or whatever. If you do that and you apply a profile to each of them, guess what? They'll all match. The color response will be the same. 
And that's a pretty amazing thing. When we shoot weddings, we often have, uh, we always have a second shooter. We sometimes have a third shooter. And sometimes there's different camera models, sometimes even different brands. So when we get back from the shoot, we have create a profile for each of the cameras, apply it to all the images, and now all the images from all the cameras have the same color response. All right, so again, someone asked again about white balance. So in, in Lightroom, you just hit W which is the uh, for white balance and I actually just white balance off the back and you see here there's also a uh, uh, white balance picker eyedropper right here if I click on that I can come in and again I white balanced off the second patch uh, remember I set up on the top on the portrait row the first row uh, is also in neutral so if I click on that there's my white balance and if I had other images in the shoot I can just select them all in this case just click on something like that down on the bottom click on sync and I want to have the white balance and the calibration applied and click synchronize and that's it but before I do that I do want to show you this one other image and again because this show this was a, a subtle difference even though the white balance might be set correctly in fact let's just sync the with uh, each of these let's just sync the white balance so that all the images do have that but now let's go ahead and apply the profile Again, here's the Adobe Standard, and again, for some reason, my camera has got a slight magenta cast to it. By adding the custom profile to it, it gets rid of that. And I'm not sure how well you're seeing it on your screen, because it depends on if you have a calibrated monitor. But on my screen, what I can see is it's going from a slightly magenta cast on the skin to the correct, a little bit more warm, a slight bit more yellow, a much more natural looking skin tone. I also just mentioned something that's important I should have mentioned earlier. All of this depends on you having a calibrated monitor. If your monitor isn't calibrated in profile before you start any of this, then all the stuff you're doing is kind of guesswork. Now we are applying profiles by the numbers, uh, which will work. However, if you start applying any subjective kind of color editing, then you're going to have a problem because you are guessing. So before you do any of this, uh, it is important that you do have a monitor that's calibrated and profiled. Okay, so let's take a look at another image. Not all of you guys are portrait shooters. Let's take a look at uh, something more landscape. I was a bird shoot. I was in St. Augustine a couple months ago at a photo fest there. And uh, some really bright white birds with deep blue. Now, I mentioned some of the blues have an amazing change you know, according to the profile again this is the Adobe standard profile watch what happens when we apply the custom profile in this case uh, this was shot with my Canon 7D and this also brings up another point notice all the profiles we just saw when I had the 5D image are missing the software knows which profiles go with which camera uh, they are tuned to the camera so I can't apply for example if I go back to this image I can not apply one of my 5D profiles to an image shot with a 7D or some other camera completely. So you won't have that uh, happen by mistake. Watch the background, particularly in this image, when I apply the custom profile. Look at the color shift. It's kind of amazing. Let me turn that off one more time. There's the before, there's the after. And what ends up happening is now we're dealing with perfect color. And sometimes it can be subtle. Again, here's another shot with the standard. And let's just let this finish loading. Come on. My computer's being slow this morning. Let's see. There's a couple of great questions here. Uh, let's see. Okay. How many profiles do you need? This is a good question. It comes up all the time. Uh, that is somewhat of a subjective call, but I can give you my recommendation, the way I do things. I like to have a profile for each type of lighting. I don't. You don't need to create a daylight profile everywhere you go. Generally, the sun isn't going to change all that much. The sun is the sun. And what we're talking about is the light spectrum. Now, white balance is going to change all the time. It's going to change throughout the day. It's going to change if clouds come over, etc. But the spectrum of the light is not. The sun is always putting out a full spectrum. It's just the color temperature that might change. So if I apply a daylight profile, um, it's going to work for pretty much anything under the sun. Now, I like to take it one step further. So I create a profile for sunny. I create one for cloudy, and then I create one for each of my light sources. I have one for my studio lights, I have one for my speed lights, 
Uh, and then if I uh, hit some other kind of light source, maybe it's tungsten, maybe it's fluorescent, I will create profiles for that. But generally at that point, unless it's some kind of weird combination, I'm pretty much done. There's no reason to create more profiles. But I will show you how to uh, manage those in a little bit. So again, one last time, here's the standard. I'll apply the custom profile. And it's a subtle, but you might have seen an overall slight lightening in the image. The greens, uh, in this case, my 7D, has a slight blue tint to it. I don't know why. And this, and you, which you can see, I'll show you another image where you can see this a little better. In fact, let's go to a portrait. Uh, let's see here. Here's our friend Mandy here. And again, as this loads, uh, a couple of things. One, notice the greens in the back. Also, uh, this particular blue... Uh, came out slightly, a slight bit of purple. Uh, I don't know why, but watch what happens to it when I apply the custom profile. See the change? The greens got a little bit of color shift, and now the blue went back to blue. So again, here's the original. Apply the custom profile. The blue's right, the skin tones are better, the background's right. Basically, my color editing is done at that point. Sometimes it's a subtle effect, sometimes it's an extremely dramatic effect, and it depends on the subject matter. Whether you're a portrait shooter or a nature shooter, again, here's a spoonbill sitting up on a, um, an old dead tree, but watch what happens to the sky when I apply the profile. Look at how much of that blue I got back. That's what was really there, and that's why it's important. Uh, to have a custom profile for this. So let me just scroll over and see if I have anything else here. I've got a couple other images I think I will save for the Photoshop portion. But I just want to make sure that it's that you're clear. It's white balance and profile go together. You have to do both things. And I'm going to use this image actually in Photoshop. Uh, just again to show you, I thought when I was photographing this that this wall was neutral. But if I white balance off of it, which is, it currently is, look at the difference when I white balance off the target, which I know in fact to be neutral, and look what happens to it. It gets more yellow, so this wall actually was slightly off. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat because I'm going to show you this again in Photoshop, but this is our friend Hazel, and she was wearing this top. It was a very difficult color, and you're going to find some colors are much more difficult to photograph than others. Um, purples are very difficult. This was kind of a... I don't know, an army green, I don't know what the color is called, um, but it just was not photographing well. Now, we did do the white balance, so we know the white balance is perfect, but the color still recorded incorrectly, and that can happen with certain colors. Once again, I scroll down to my profile and apply the custom profile. This was shot, in this case, with a Fuji S5. Watch the top of her dress. It's an amazing change. That's what she was wearing, not that other dull thing. So what the profile did was it gave me back all the color here that was missing from the shoot. And again, if I want to take the rest of these images, all the images done in this shoot, I want to apply the white balance and profile to the entire shoot. Simply click on sync, choose white balance and calibration, the two of those, click on synchronize, and now the entire shoot has just been color edited. Now you might want to do blemish retouching or cropping or exposure, etc., like that. But the color part of it now is perfect. You may choose you want to enhance it a little more. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to zoom in. Let's go to this one to three. Remember I mentioned the uh, enhancement target here. Now, if I decide I want her skin to be a little bit warmer, I can come over here and start to warm it. Now, notice the preview window in the upper left-hand corner. As I've got the white balance picker, again, the first patch on the portrait row is neutral. As I move off to the right, you'll see the image getting warmer, and you can see that happening in the preview. Now, this far right one is really warm. I like to use one or two patches in, depending on how much warmth I want on the skin. Now, this her skin was fairly warm to begin with, and it depends on your subject. So I'm just going to come in one and apply there, and look what it did to the image. Let's go back. So there's the neutral coming. Ah, let's do two so you can see it a little better. I'll make it a little more dramatic. So now you can see her skin got a lot warmer. Again, this is a subjective part, but if you're going for a certain look and you always want to make sure that the skin gets back to that warmth, you can do it that way. It's very fast, and I could reapply this new custom white balance to all the images and get that warmth back on the skin. 
Now, a couple other good questions. Uh, uh, some uh, people ask, well, should I do this for every lens? Should I do it for different ISOs? Very good questions. If you want to get really technical about it, certain lenses are going to have slightly different colors. What I would suggest probably is try one. You see it takes 30 seconds to create a profile. Create one for the lens and see if you notice much of a difference. It might be very subtle. It could be a lot depending on the age of the lens and the coatings. As far as different ISOs, that is a good question because certain cameras do respond differently. If I'm shooting some very high ISO stuff, 1600 and above, where generally I'm shooting at 100 ISO for most of my work, I will create a profile uh, for a shoot that is, it is very high uh, ISO because your camera does respond to color differently uh, uh, in, in that case. All right, so again, someone asked, what if the passport's not in the photo? How do you reference it? Well, you need to reference it from another photo. That's, the, that's how you do that. So for example, here we have some portraits we did, again, of our friend Hazel. She doesn't have a passport here, so what I do is make the corrections to an image that was shot under similar lighting, select the rest of the images, and that's where the sync comes in. And then I'll synchronize the white balance and the calibration to those images, and then all of the images get that white balance and custom profile. That's how to do that. And now this is done, uh, somebody asked about flash, ambient, etc. This is under studio strobes, this is under flash. So what you do is you simply take the photograph of the passport with these two targets showing under whatever light it is you're using. Now it doesn't have to be in exactly the same spot. Again, we're going for the spectrum of the light. So typically what I'll do is I'll have my model just hold the thing. If I'm shooting landscape work, then what I'll do is I simply hold it at arm's length. Uh, and that's that's all there is to that. So, and I'll show you a landscape shot in Photoshop. So I think we're pretty much done with Lightroom. Uh, let's see. Let's go in. I think we're done with Lightroom. Let's jump into Photoshop and take a look to see how it's done here because there's a different set of questions here. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to quit Lightroom so that I can free up some time. Let's go into Photoshop. And let's hide other stuff so we don't have to see it. And again, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. You guys are sending me lots of great questions. Um, but <clears throat> just me here answering questions right now. So I'm not going to be able to get to all your questions. However, when we're done, I'll give you an email address so that you can send questions there. All right, so let's open up a couple of raw files in Photoshop. And let's see. Let's go into the desktop. And where are my raw files? Okay, here's my raw files. Let's take a look at the thumbnails. And in this case, what we'll do is we'll do some, uh, we'll do some, well, let's do a, a landscape first. So let me scroll down and let's see what I have here. Um, oh, I have something to torture you with. I've got a couple of shots from a medium format digital back. So let's do that. Okay. Actually, let's open up a couple more. Let's open up uh, one of the hazel shots we just did as well. So I'm going to open up four raw images. And what they're going to do is, of course, they're not going to open up into Photoshop. They're going to open up into Adobe Camera Raw. Now, doing a, creating a profile in Adobe Camera Raw and in Photoshop is a little bit different. It's not a plug-in. There's a little desktop application that allows you to do this. Now, someone asked about cropping. Do you need to fill the frame with this? And the answer is no. This image actually is enough. This is pushing it. This is getting a little small. Generally, I like to fill the frame more kind of like that. This is just me holding it out at arm's length. But this, as long as you've got enough resolution, this is plenty. And by the way, cropping in isn't going to help because when you go to create the profile, it's looking at the, the raw file as well. So I need to create a profile. Now there's one time I need to save a file as a different file type. In this case, I need to create a DNG profile, a DNG file to create a profile from here. DNG is what uh, all the Adobe Suite applications use. And also, yes, to answer if the questions come up ready or if it's going to, this stuff is designed to be shot or to be used with the Adobe Suite. Right now, Adobe is the only one using this DNG workflow. So if you're not using Photoshop or Lightroom or Bridge or Photoshop Elements, 
then uh, it, the, the profile part of this is not going to work. Uh, so other programs like Aperture or Capture One that use an ICC workflow uh, are not going to use this. So what I need to do is save a DNG file. Very simple. This is the only time you ever have to save a file as something else. All the other time you might have noticed when we were in Lightroom, it was just whatever the native RAW file was. From Adobe Camera Raw, I do need to save a DNG. So I click on Save Image. You might, you'll also notice that in Adobe Camera Raw, the default is DNG. And let's see, we'll call it Hazel Studio Test. I have a folder already created for my DNG files. And I simply click Save, and that's all there is to it. Now I need to create the profile. And this is the one time I need to go outside of Photoshop, because there's an application also that comes with the color checker called Color Checker Passport. And it works kind of like the Lightroom thing uh, that we just saw does. It's just a separate little application. So it says drag and drop a DNG image here, or you can just sit, hit File, Add Image. So let me go to my folder that's got all of my DNG folder files, which is right here. All right, so let's get the one we just created. Here it is, Hazel Studio Test and click open. And what the software is going to do is it's going to look into the image and find the target and then it's going to actually present us with the target zoomed in on the screen even though it's looking at the whole image. Basically it's just going to tell us okay I found the target and here it is. Now as far as orientation and focus goes you can see here the image it isn't even that great of focus. Uh, orientation is okay. If for some reason it misfinds the target you can actually dra drag these green little corner marks uh, if maybe you had a thumb or a finger kind of slightly shading one of the targets, you don't want that to happen. So I'll just, I can uh, move these green dots to make sure the sampling squares are centered in each of these. In fact, I could also zoom out so you can see that this is actually being taken from the entire image. And then again, you just simply create, select profile. I'm going to call this... I'm going to call it Hazel Test 2 because I want you to see that this will be seen automatically and right away. Adobe Camera Raw does not have to be restarted. It's always checking uh, your system. Uh, and also, yes, by the way, I am working on a, a MacBook Pro right now to show you guys. This, all of this stuff looks exactly the same under Windows. It really doesn't matter if you're Mac or PC based. It, it doesn't matter what kind of monitor you're working on because this is all using the numbers behind the scenes. Okay, so it says the profile's been created, and it says applications using the profile may need to be restarted. And what they're talking about is Lightroom. What ends up happening is, since all the profiles get put in the same place, if you create a profile in Lightroom, Photoshop sees it. If you create a profile in Photoshop, Lightroom sees it. So I hit OK, and I can quit this. Now if I go into the profiling, which you might know, wonder where are profiles in Adobe Camera Raw? Actually, let's make this full screen here. It's actually under this, this little icon here, Camera Calibration. So if I click on that, you'll see here's the Adobe Standard that we were dealing with that terrible color before. Let's go ahead and white balance again. Let's, I'm going to white balance off of this neutral. So there's our white balance. We've got that nailed in, but again, remember the dress, the top of the dress was really missing the color. So here's Hazel Test 2. This is the one we just created. because Adobe Camera does see them right away. And look what happens to the color. So once again, we went from that to that and got all the color. The skin tones are neutral again. We got the green back in the dress. The color checker passport. Colors now look like they're supposed to be. And I can open this in Photoshop and do my editing. But again, my color, uh, color editing can be done. Now, I can also select the other images in the shoot, just like we did in Lightroom. Click on Synchronize, and we have a similar looking menu that we just saw when we were in Lightroom. Click on OK, and the white balance and profile are then applied to the other images. In this case, I just chose this other one. So again, you see here's the profile Hazel Test 2, and we can back up one more time as soon as this is done drawing, and take a look at the Adobe Standard Profile and look again, look what it did to the color. It basically killed the image. But when we apply the profile, we get the beauty of that color of the dress. The skin tones are nailed. Whoops, I just white balanced off her nose. Bad idea. 
Let me undo that. Okay. But again, I hope you can see an amazing difference. There's the standard profile. Here's the custom profile for our lights. All the colors are nailed. It's just a beautiful thing. Okay. Now, somebody, somebody uh, Mark says that his D300 has a very yellowish cast. Is this normal? Very yellow is actually kind of odd. What I've seen is most cameras either have a cyan or magenta cast to them. Um, so there could be something wrong with the camera, but it could just be the way you're just set up. But again, if you create a custom profile for it and you get that white balance perfect, then it's going to be perfect because it has all that reference. So let's take one more look while we're in Photoshop, and then I'll show you guys how to manage profiles, by the way. So again, arm's length. When you're shooting landscape work, uh, as I do a lot of, I will typically just hold the target out in front of me. Now, does it have to be in focus? It, it has to be kind of in focus. It doesn't have to be absolutely tack sharp. Because what the software does is it actually uses this grid to find the target. So you do want to make sure the grid's in focus. If it's a little soft, that's okay. What is very important, however, is exposure. You have to make sure that it's not overexposed or grossly underexposed. If you have any, uh, I turn on the highlight warnings here, and you see I don't have any. Uh, if that were to happen, in fact, let's... Let's make believe we're, we're going to force a highlight warning just so you can see. I'm going to overexpose this intentionally. We can see the histogram up here is now against the right side. And if I turn on the highlight warning, which is right here, you'll see now the white patches on both the, uh, the Color Checker Classic and on the Enhancement Target have disappeared. They're telling me that that's blown out. So you do want to make sure that the target's exposed correctly. You don't want to have any of those highlight warnings. So again, I can go to camera calibration. This already has it applied. Uh, in this case, with this software, uh, this particular camera doesn't have an Adobe standard. It uses what's called an ACR 4.6 because this is a medium format back. Let me again show you. Here's the original profile. This is uh, Jenny Lake in the Grand Tetons. Again, the white balance was set correctly, but the profile was way off and watch what happens when we apply the profile all the colors come back and we're done oh, the one part I said I was going to torture you guys I have I am fortunate enough to have access to these cameras as uh, a 28 megapixel uh, large sensor digital back the reason I wanted to torture you is I want to show you the detail and consider yourself warned I'm going to start to zoom in the, uh, once you see the files that you get out of one of these things, it's hard to go back. So here's 100%, and uh, you can see the incredible sharpness and detail. So that's what you get when you move up to medium format digital. So just to kind of torture you there. As good as my uh, DSLRs are, they can't touch the files that come out of these beasts, but it's a wonderful thing. Okay, so uh, again, one last thing before we leave here. Uh, Tom asked a good question. Does the exposure have to be correct in camera, or can you adjust it in Adobe Camera Raw? It actually needs to be correct in the, in the base file, not uh, doing the correction after the fact. You might be able to do a lot of, of uh, highlight recovery in software after the fact, but the profile is created from the base raw file before any adjustments are made. Uh, so you do need to make sure that your exposure is correct from the get-go. You, you don't want to have to do it in software because it's going to ignore. It's going to ignore that. Now, um, oh, and then at this point again, uh, you just open your image and off you go. So I'm just going to hit done here and show you a little bit of software. Uh, when you get a color checker passport and register it online at xrightphoto.com, you then can download this little software utility called the DNG Profile Manager. And if I click on that, you get to see here all of the profiles that are in your system. And you can turn them on and off at will. And you will also see some that we just created. Here's the Hazel Test 2. Well, I've got a bunch of these. I really don't need this profile anymore. I can turn it on and off so I don't get overrun with profiles. I can also um, select these and export them if I wanted to send them to someone else. Uh, then they'd have to manually be put in. But I can turn on and off profiles here. If I decide I really just don't need this profile anymore, like I don't need this uh, generic 5D daylight one, I can just hit the delete key 
and it says you're sure you want to delete it and yes it's gone so that's how you can delete you can turn them on and off now if you don't have this utility um, you can manually do this uh, I'm I Windows it's different on every version if you go on again if you go on xwritephoto.com you can find out exactly where the location is I can tell you on the Macintosh uh, all the profiles for the camera live in users library color sync camera profiles that was a lot but again if you go on to uh, um, x write photo it will show you where they are but I recommend you don't uh, I recommend you you don't go into there and start messing around with them uh, get this utility it really makes things very easy now you as you can see I shoot lots of different cameras and I don't have all that many profiles here I will create custom profiles though if I hit some kind of really weird lighting. Um, some months ago I photographed my niece's gymnastics meet and it was in this gymnasium that had alternating tungsten and sodium vapor lights. It was kind of a creamy orange, kind of freaky kind of color. Doing a white balance did not help. All the girls' uniforms with just a white balance, the colors came out completely wrong because there were holes in the spectrum of that light. There were certain colors that just were not in those light bulbs, and then there were other colors that were accentuated. So a white balance wasn't going to fix that. What I did was create a custom profile for just that lighting, again, just holding the target out so that it was illuminated by those lights, created a profile for it, applied it to all the gymnastic shots, and they were all perfect. Uh, so that's really the beauty of that. So let's quit the profile manager, and let's go back into PowerPoint to finish things up. Okay, so we did Lightroom. Uh, I did mention anything that works with Adobe Camera Raw. So if you have Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, so you're working in Bridge, uh, then all of that will work as well. Now, someone asked about what are the different illuminants. Uh, when the software creates the profile, it does look to see what the spectrum of the light is. So you might have seen some are D50, which is five, another way of saying 5000K. Some were uh, D65. Some were tungsten lights. They might have been 3200. That's just the, the software does see, uh, based on the, the color of the neutral targets, what kind of illuminant is doing that. Okay. Uh, now, so, uh, somebody, uh, uh, Sage asked, if you're shooting landscape, if it's stormy, do you need to recheck the white balance? Uh, yes. When you've got a lot of light changing, uh, the, the white balance may change. Now, whether you want to do something about it or not is a subjective call. For example, if you're shooting sunrise, sunset, you've got that warm yellow glow. You don't want to white balance that out. You want to keep that. So when I'm shooting those two times a day, sunset or sunrise, I use a white balance and a profile from midday because I don't want to uh, neutralize out that warm glow that I've either got up really early in the morning for or waited for. So white balance is somewhat of a subjective point, um, but the profile is going to be again for the color spectrum. Okay, so we already went into Photoshop. Let's talk briefly about RAW, uh, or about JPEG instead of RAW. Now, if you are a Lightroom person, actually really at any, any time at this point, uh, these softwares are so fast, the computers are so fast that I don't see any reason to shoot JPEGs anymore. Uh, the RAW gives me so much flexibility as far as having the ability to send that file out in any way I want. When I'm in Lightroom or in Adobe Camera Raw, I can send out this file as a JPEG, a TIFF, a PSD, all at the same time, and I can change settings, I can change white balance, I can change color space, but I always have my RAW file to go back to if I want to get back to those RAW standard settings uh, before any adjustments have been done. However, there's one time I deal with JPEG files. I also have a little $129 point and shoot camera that only shoots JPEGs. So in that case, I can't do a custom profile for that camera, but I do take a shot of the white balance target so that I can have my white balance, and I will also custom white balance off of that, and that does save me time when I'm doing my editing. Also, the creative enhancement target still works for the JPEGs, because again, that's really a white balance adjustment. I can cool or warm the images. And as far as the classic target goes, I unfortunately can't create a profile with it. However, uh, I can use it as a reference. 
I can check for my exposure. I can see that my white or, or black is not uh, clipping. Uh, and I can kind of, I have to do a visual check at that point, again, which requires a monitor that's been calibrated and profiled, but it is there. But really to take advantage of the power of this, you really need to be able to shoot raw. Now for you Nikon people, uh, a couple people asked, can you use it in Nikon capture? And the answer unfortunately to that is no. Uh, again, this only will work right now with the Adobe products. It's got to be in Lightroom or Photoshop or Elements or Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, and uh, Bob also asked, can you use 8-bit or 16-bit? Yes, doesn't matter. Okay. I'm just about out of time, so let's kind of let's summarize. So what have we seen? All right, we've seen white balance is important, but it's not getting us all the colors. It's using a very safe generic kind of conversion, but a lot of colors often suffer. And we've seen that the standard raw conversion is causing us to lose some colors, particularly in the blues for some reason. If you include the color checker passport, what is it going to do? It's going to bring back the color. It's going to give you a much more film-like response. If you have a profile for each of your cameras, uh, and again, if they're different models or different brands, if you have a profile for each of them under the same lighting conditions, you're going to get a matched color response, which is, again, an, an enormous thing, especially if you're doing something like wedding shooting. To take it one step further, uh, somebody asked, what if you have two of the same model camera? Do you need to profile each of them? Well, that's something you'd have to test. Uh, our studio, we do have two 7Ds. We have three Fuji S5s. We did do a test to see if there was enough of a profile difference between them that we needed. In our case, no, but I have seen it happen. And one of the beauties of Lightroom is when you're sorting your images, you can actually sort them not only by camera type or, or capture, but you can actually sort them by camera serial number. So that's a way that you could actually separate out if one of your cameras was responding differently. Also, if you have a profile for daylight and cloudy and tungsten, the color response of different items will stay the same through different light sources. For example, you're shooting a wedding and you've got your bridesmaids in their typical hideous bridesmaids dress colors. And under daylight or under sunlight, it looks different than when they move inside under, say, some tungsten lighting. By having a profile, that color will maintain the same all the way through. So I hope you see that the hours of editing time this can save you. Uh, once I put this into place, it cut my color editing time down by 75% because by having the profile and the white balance applied to all my images, most of my color editing is done. Now, so, uh, Nita asked if I import into Lightroom, uh, there was an assumption that I recommend using DNG rather than staying with the raw and import. And the answer to that is that's a personal preference. I do not do that. Uh, I just import all my raw files as is. I do not convert to DNG. Nothing wrong with that. Do I have a real reason for not doing it? No, but for my demonstration purposes, it also uh, lets me see from the extension which camera I brought it in from because I shoot with many cameras. If it's a CR2, I know it came in from my Canons. If it's NEFs, it's Nikon. If it's Fuji, they have their, uh, their own file type, RAF. So I like to have my extensions because it lets me see just just by a quick eyeball which camera shot the image. So again, what you see here is different lighting, same camera, same color response. However, this was a test shoot we did, two different cameras, Nikon D3, Canon 5D. Under different lighting conditions, by applying a profile to each of them, we got similar color responses from each camera, even though they were different brands. Okay, so then everybody asks, well, how much is this? Retail price, I can tell you. What I'd recommend is you talk to your favorite dealer about uh, what they charge. Retail price is $99. If you've got something that's bugging you, really need an answer for, you want to have a further discussion on some kind of fine point, feel free to send me an email at answers at xrightphoto.com, and I'll do my best to get you an answer. So that's it for today. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining. Uh, until next time, everyone have a great rest of the week and hope to see you online again soon. Bye-bye.